Section 9.2, solving quadratic equations by graphing. Uh, so here we have a, uh, an equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Now this is a nonlinear equation written in standard form. It's nonlinear because I have an exponent of 2. Uh, if it was a linear equation, uh, I wouldn't be able to have any exponents here. Uh, linear equations are easy to solve. Nonlinear equations can be a little bit tougher, but one way we can solve them is by graphing. Uh, and so what I do is I'm actually going to take three steps. I'm going to first graph the related function y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That's the same thing as what I have here, but I replace the 0 with y. Uh, then I can determine the x-intercepts, if there are any, and those are going to be the solutions to the equation. We've already talked about this before. The solutions to the equation are going to be the equivalent to the zeros of the function, the x-intercepts. Uh, and just a little note, you don't need to use standard form to graph this function. Vertex form would work just as well. Um, if you happen to have uh, an equation written in vertex form, uh, it would work just, uh, just fine. So let's take a look at uh, how we can do this now. All right, so one example is uh, x squared plus 2x equals 3. Uh, we want to uh, graph that equation. And so my first step is to move all the terms to one side, uh, setting the equation equal to 0. So perhaps with my first example here, I'm going to move everything to the left, and I will start by subtracting 3 from each side. Now pay attention to the fact that there are no like terms there, so I really just have x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0. And uh, now I want to replace that 0 with y. So I'm uh, looking at x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals y. And I need to graph that function. Now, in order to graph that function, we just go back to uh, the way that we used to uh, graph. Uh, from standard form, we'd use the x equals negative b over 2a. So x equals uh, negative 2 over 2 times 1 which is negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. So x equals negative 1 is our axis of symmetry. We're then going to plug that in uh, to the function um, and get negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 3, which is going to give me 1 minus 2 minus 3, and that equals, uh, let's see, negative 1 minus 3, negative 4. Uh, and that equals my y. So my vertex would be at negative uh, 1, negative 4. So then I could just uh, create an xy table and I'm going to see x, y, here's a negative 1, negative 4, and then I'm going to have 0 and 1 and negative 2, negative 3, and I would just fill in uh, the missing information here. So we know how to do that. Let's see what the graph would look like. Uh, we can just use a uh, graphing calculator to get that. And so you can see the parabola here um, has that vertex, negative 1, negative 4, that we expected. Uh, the uh, A term is positive, so it does, in fact, open up. Now we just look for the x-intercepts, the zeros of this function, uh, which are at 1, 0, and uh, negative 3, 0. And so the x-intercepts here, x equals 1 and uh, x equals negative 3, are going to be our two solutions. We can check them by plugging them into our original problem. Uh, I'll first start by plugging in 1. 1 squared plus 2 times 1. That should equal 3. That's 1 plus 2 equals 3. That one certainly works. And then uh, I'll check the negative 3. So um, negative 3 squared plus 2 times negative 3. Hopefully that equals 3. Well, negative 3 squared is 9. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 and 9 plus negative 6, that does in fact equal 3. So both of those work. And, and so then, really what that means is I have my two solutions are right here. x equals 1, x equals negative 3. All right, let's uh, see another one. All right, another example here. Solve uh, x squared equals 8x minus 16. Um, we're going to follow the same process. Now we can move all the terms to whichever side we want. We can just graph you know, the parabola however it, it turns out. So. We can either move the 8x and the 16 to the left or the x squared to the right. I'll move the x squared to the right, even though I'm going to have a negative, that's going to be okay. So I'm going to subtract x squared from each side, which is going to give me uh, 0 equals, I'm going to still put it in standard form. So negative x squared plus 8x minus 16. 
and uh, replace the 0 with y. So I'm looking to graph y equals negative x squared plus 8x minus 16. Uh, I'm going to graph that function. Now, I know that it should open down because I have a negative x squared, uh, but I just do the same process that I did before uh, in order to graph that. So let's uh, skip that and see what the graph would look like. So you can see here we do have that uh, parabola that does open down. Uh, its vertex is right here at the point four zero, uh, And so that's our, our graph. So the x-intercepts, we actually only have one x-intercept there. Um, x equals 4, and the point 4, 0 is our x-intercept. So uh, if we check this uh, and plug that into our uh, equation, we should uh, that should work. So I'm going to check it by doing 4 squared equals 8 times 4 minus 16. Uh, 4 squared is 16. 8 times 4 is 32. And 32 minus 16 is, in fact, 16. So 4 is a solution. And it turns out this is a parabola that only has one solution. Uh, or sorry, a, a quadratic equation that only has one. The parabola shows that it only has one x-intercept. It has one zero, therefore it has uh, just one solution, which is x equals 4. That's the solution to my original equation. All right, um, let's see one more example. All right, uh, last example here. Solve negative x squared plus 2x plus 4. Uh, you can do it whichever way you want here. I'm going to add uh, x squared to each side. So I'm going to have uh, 0 equals x squared plus 2x plus 4. Uh, y equals x squared plus 2x plus 4. So it should be opening up. Uh, we find the vertex, and uh, we graph it using a t-chart. So let's take a look at what that would look like. We know how to go through that process. And so here we see we have our parabola. We expect it to open up because it's a positive x squared. And it does, and its vertex is at negative 1, 3. So now we're looking to determine the x-intercepts, but it comes down towards the x-axis and turns back up. It's never going to hit the x-axis. So this actually uh, has no x-intercepts. There are none. Uh, what that means is that we actually have a special type of equation which has no solution, or specifically no real solution. So there's nothing to actually check here. We just have no solution. Uh, you could also express that answer uh, by using uh, the crossed off O there, crossed off zero. Uh, that's the symbol for no solution. Um, there are solutions that are certain types of numbers called imaginary numbers, but that's nothing that we're focused on now. Um, so you will encounter equations that have no solution. Um, there's not a single number, real number, we can plug into my original equation and have it work out to be true. So um, that's it. Hope, uh, hope this is clear. All right, so just want to kind of wrap things up here. Um, if we take any quadratic equation and rewrite it where we get 0 on one side, we can graph a function that's uh, related to it. And based on the x-intercepts that we find, we can identify the solutions to the equation. We always want to check because sometimes it looks like a certain values the x-intercept, and it might actually be off a little bit. You know, maybe it looks like it's exactly 1, but it could be 1.1. 1 .1. So we always want to double check. Um, if, uh, if the related function has two different x-intercepts, uh, like this example here, then uh, the related uh, then the uh, quadratic equation is going to have those two solutions uh, at the x-intercept uh, x values. If the uh, quadratic equation has one uh, x-intercept, which happens to be actually at its vertex, uh, which would be in this case uh, 4, 0, x equals 4, then uh, it's only going to have one repeated real solution. So that's uh, a different case there. And then the third case is um, that a uh, graph of a parabola has no x-intercepts, no like this example here. Then uh, that quadratic equation is going to have no real solutions. And that pretty much wraps up everything you need to know about section 9.2. There are some applications we're going to look at, but that is uh, all you need as far as new material goes. Hope this was clear.